Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we're making an invention that's an enhancement on the Nintendo Switch dock. And although the Nintendo Switch itself is pretty fun and colorful, the Nintendo Switch dock is a little bit plain and boring. So since we've been printing lithophane pictures recently, the idea is to make a custom light box and put this lithophane picture on the front. And then with this, when you play different games, you can swap out different pictures as you play different games. So that's the idea, now let's get to the design. And here we have it, have the mechanical structure done and printed out. The lithophane picture slides in here like this, you got a little top cap to go on top. And then you'll take your Nintendo Switch dock and put it on the back just like this. And then finally you can see the Nintendo Switch just drops in there like that show you a full 360 view on how all of that fits together. Still have room for your cabling and wiring to come in. And now electronics. You have the LED controller, the LED light strip themselves, the remote control for the LED light strip, and then the power supply that will power all of it. And these LED light strips are super easy to turn on and control. But the challenge will be getting all these electronic components neatly mounted in this purple box, as well as getting power directly from the switch dock. Okay, so you hold this and I'll do all the work. So first off, the really cool part about these LED strips is they're designed to be cut into strips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take and cut several strips here. And now with the LED strips, I'm going to put them onto this sticky tape to hold them into sort of a checkered matrix. And the spacing in this LED matrix is what's going to determine how far away the LEDs need to be from the lithophane. So if you have a 20 millimeter spacing, you want about a 20 millimeter gap between the LEDs and the lithophane. And now after a lot of hand soldering, we have all the LED strips connected back together. So let's now plug it into the controller and see if everything still works. We'll quickly cycle through the colors, just make sure everything is working. So that looks great. And now we'll go ahead and just secure these together a little bit more with some hot glue. And next is figure out how to power these LEDs with the Nintendo Switch dock. Here on the bottom of the switch dock, it says it's a 15 voltage output. And on the side of the switch dock, we have USB ports, which doesn't quite make sense. So let's test that. So to do that, we're just gonna take a cheap USB cable and cut that open, strip the power and ground wire, and we're gonna hook that up to the voltmeter, plug this into the switch and see what it says. And looking at the multimeter here, it is a five volt output, just like a standard USB port. So the 15 volts must be referring to the power to the switch itself. No worries though, according to our LED controller, it can handle a DC 5 volt input. So let's uh, get that wire hooked up and see how that works. So we're taking off the original power input cable here and soldering on a USB cable instead. Okay, we've got all the pieces laid out here. The Nintendo switch will power the LED controller and that will plug into the LED lights here. So let's hit the power and see what happens. So it seems like uh, nothing is happening. But let's take a closer look. Ah, uh, we've got a faint red glow, which means the LEDs are not getting enough voltage. So let's put in our handy dandy DC converter and bump that voltage up to 12 volts. Now let's see uh, if this turns on. And voila, we have uh, lights. So let's throw it into the enclosure and see how it looks. Oh, that looks pretty awful. Remember before when I talked about the importance of maintaining space between the LEDs and the lithophane? Well, that's a problem we're seeing here. The LEDs are too close and touching the lithophane, so there's not enough room for that light to diffuse. So now I've just added some hot glue to fix those LED strips to the back panel there so it can maintain a proper spacing. With that, let's do some final assembly. Put the lithophane picture in. We can take and put the lid back on top, and we'll load our switch dock onto here. Finally, we can take and put our Nintendo Switch in there, and let's see the uh, final result here. And now we have that lit up again. Things are looking really good and crisp. Pretty happy with the result of the function. Unfortunately, with this prototype though, I did not plan for enough room to put all these electronic components inside, so we're gonna have to make a different version to fix that. But while we're here, let's swap out and put a different lithophane picture in there. This time we've got the Nintendo Switch lithophane. Let's see how that looks with the backlight. Well, I can safely say it's at least more eye-catching than the original design. All right, let's move on to version 2.0, which I've made some improvements such as more LEDs. It'll be brighter, easier to build, and cleaner looking. All right, so I've got the parts printed out for version 2.0. In the bottom here, you can see I've added a cavity to fit all the electronics. 
So there's a groove here to put the power input cable. And I've got a top cap for it, almost the same as before, but I've improved the snapping a little bit, so it snaps into place nicer. And there's some finger grooves on the side, so you can take that off. And for this version, I found a little bit smaller boost converter to boost the voltage from 5 to 12 volts. I've designed this nifty little bracket for it. it has some V grooves on the side, so this DC converter will just slide in there. Fits pretty snug. And then there's some holes there to mount that in the bottom of the base. So we'll just take a couple of M3 by 5 screws to mount that down. Our LED controller has two output cables on it, and we only have enough room for one in our enclosure. So I got rid of the overmold, desoldered the wires to get rid of that second cable. Now to mount our LED controller, we'll take the remote sensor and the output cable and feed them through this hole, and then we'll mount the PCV in the bottom of the box here. To mount this, I made this nifty little bracket that basically clamps down on the PCV, also using an M3 by five screw. And next we just have to connect the positive and negative wires from the DC converter to the LED controller. So we'll cut, strip those and get them soldered up. And finally, to add the power input cable, I've just used a micro USB cable, but you can also use wires and solder them directly to the DC converter. So now we have the remote sensor and the LED output cable poking up to the top here. So let's talk about the new LEDs I used on this version two. On the top here is the old LEDs I used. You can see they have a lot further spacing, about 33 millimeters. And on the bottom here, the newer LEDs that are spaced a lot closer at about 16 millimeters. Also, the original LEDs I had were encapsulated to make them waterproof. It wasn't really necessary for this design. It was a bit painful to peel that away. So the new LEDs I got were not encapsulated, which made it a lot easier to work with those. Another improvement for ease of assembly was finding these 90 degree corner clips. And the LED strips can just slide into these connectors here. It's mounted on a flexible PCB here. So this is going to save a lot of time compared to the last build with all the hand soldering. Okay, we have our LED strips, we have our corner connectors, and we have our 3D printed clips. So let's get to the plan. So here's our very simple plan slash wiring diagram. We're going to use this input cable to sneak around the bottom and connect to the top of the strips. And then we're going to have them snake down and have five total LED strips. And the LED strips are very easy to assemble. Here we need to remove one of these snap covers so that two 90 degree joints can make a 180 degree joint. And then we'll go ahead and snap all these covers shut to secure the connections. And now for the fun part, since this is too big of a spacing, we're actually going to fold these flexible PCBs in like this, and then fold this top one back to sandwich that all together. And then I've 3D printed these little yellow plastic clips that will go over that and hold that connection tight like that. And once this clip is slid on there, it will hold everything together and hold the LED strips at a proper spacing. And that's the first two rows of our LED matrix. Now we just have to repeat that process several more times. When you print out these little clips, make sure they're upright like this. Do not print them on their side like this or like this, or they will be easily broken. Now we'll join a couple more 90 degree elbows to make a 180 degree joint. Snap the covers down. Now it looks like I'm going up with this instead of going down, but once you fold everything together, this LED strip will actually end up going down. And again on the folding sequence, we'll fold the left and right halves inward, and then we'll take that whole top part and fold it back, and then hold that together while you slide the clip on there to hold everything in place. Once I got this process down, it was so much faster and easier than the hand soldering. An important tip when assembling new LED strips, make sure you're paying attention to the polarity, which means make sure 12 volts is always connected to 12 volts. If you accidentally flip the polarity backwards, that LED strip and any ones after it won't light up. And now onto the fifth and final row of the LED strips. This will give us 30 LEDs total. At this point, you should be getting pretty good at connecting these 90 degree elbows and pretty good at the folding sequence. And now all that's left to do is put on this final 3D printed clip and we should be finished with the fifth and final row of LEDs. Now before we get all these LEDs mounted, the next step will be to plug in the LEDs and make sure that everything's working. And right away here you can see we have some problems, we have some LED strips not working. So it took me a little bit to troubleshoot this. I know what you must be thinking right now, bending all those LED strips and folding them over must have caused some damage. But actually, that's not what's going on here. Actually, it happened I cut some of these LED strips too short, and there wasn't enough pad area to make a good contact. So I replaced those with some new LED strips that I cut a bit longer. That made a very good contact area, and now everything's functioning well. 
Finally, once you've found everything is working and reliable, it's time to mount these LED strips in the enclosure. So you kind of just drop these and lay them into place, and then you'll have to rearrange the wiring to make sure they fit in there. And then after this again, I utilize the glue gun to just make sure that middle portion was glued back to the uh, back wall there. And next we'll slide in the lithophane and do some functional testing, make sure everything looks good. Just cycling through the colors here for some testing. One problem I did find with having the remote sensor in the top was when I displayed white on the LEDs, the signal interfered and the remote would not work. So to solve this issue, I ended up moving the remote sensor to the bottom of the enclosure and then I had no issues. So now with everything in working order, I'm gonna take a few final cleanup steps. So I'll start by gluing this power cord into place so it doesn't fall out of that slot on the bottom. And finally, we'll assemble this cover on the bottom so that we can hide all of these messy electronics. This cover will assemble with four M3 by five screws, one in each corner. And these screws are countersunk so that we keep a nice flat surface on the bottom. Now let's finish the last few steps. We'll drop the lithophane picture into place and put the top cap on. So we can turn this around and we can go ahead and grab our switch dock and place that on here. Now we can fold down the back cover of the switch dock and connect our USB cord into the standard port on the back of the switch. Then we can bring in the power cord for the switch, get that routed and put this back panel up and hide all the wires. Now version 2.0 has a very clean wiring solution. Now we can flip this around and put the switch into place. And now let's start looking at the different colors. So with our handy remote here, we'll just cycle through the colors. We have red, and we have green, and we have blue, as well as about 12 other colors we can cycle through. So now let's go ahead and grab the old version and let's do some comparison between the old and the new. So taking off the front covers here, we can see the new yellow one has a lot more LEDs, has 30 compared to the old version just had 21 LEDs. Having more LEDs gives us a little more even spacing of those LEDs and it pushes more brightness through the back of the lithophane pictures. You can see the old design on the right is not quite pushing through the picture like it should and I install the one on the left. You can see the picture very clearly. Green seems to look okay for both versions, but with blue you can see the same problem. The one on the right is just not powerful enough. So now as promised, I'll swap out some different photos for different games on these lithophane light boxes. You can see how easy it is to swap these out. And on the right we have Mario Kart 8, and on the left we have Legend of Zelda. In fact, you can create any lithophane photo you want. If you want to learn more about that, you can watch my beginner's guide video on how to make lithophane pictures. And this lithophane switch dock is designed to use lithophane photos that are 120 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters tall, and 7.5 millimeters deep. In the description below, I'll leave links to all the electronics you need to make this lithophane switch dock. Also, all the 3D models will be linked in the description below. So you can make your very own lithophane switch dock at home. If you have a 3D printer at home, you can easily make this yourself for less than $50. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for supporting the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And until then, we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.